Hi everyone and welcome back. Right, so today I'm going to be doing a little watercolour for you. Um, it's of a church, obviously. <laughs> you can see the uh, reference photo there in the top um, right hand corner. Uh, the materials that I'm going to be using are the Dale Rowney Aquafine paper. Um, just recently reviewed that actually. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you're interested. I'm using the textured um, paper quite a rough grain on this one it's quite nice to work with uh, the paper's very nice actually and this is probably the first um, proper watercolor that I've you know actually attempted on it I've done several sketches um, and you know little watercolors on it and it's worked out fine so I'm going to do this sort of pencil and wash style uh, watercolor today um, to test it even further um, the colors that I'll be using are lemon yellow Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Crimson Alizarin, Payne's Grey, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, Cerulean Blue and Hooker's Green. So that's 10 colours there on my palette um, and that's all I'll be using. So I'm drawing the scene out with an HB pencil, pressing fairly lightly so as I don't damage the paper or anything. And as you can see there I'm using um, not a full grid but a part grid. Um, just enough squares and lines there just to cover over where the church is um, the rest of it you know is easy enough to kind of freehand draw um, but those few simple lines there are just just there just to help me with the perspective of the church and the proportions of it um, and they're really helpful actually and it also means that there's less erasing on the watercolour paper um, once you've finished the drawing which is always uh, beneficial because I have in the past um, actually damaged some watercolour paper um, you know when I'm actually erasing the grid lines out but I have to say this paper really stood up to erasing really well which is another box ticked for this paper uh, it's proving to be um, you know quite a good quality paper this is you know the more I test it the more I'm finding these things out in fact I'm that impressed with this paper that I've actually decided to go and buy um, the larger size pad the A3 size pad and also try out the hot pressed paper as well you know the smooth textured um, paper um, so I'll, I'll keep you posted on that and we'll see how the smooth texture performs as well okay so back to the drawing I've actually decided to simplify the scene a little bit use a little bit of artistic license and leave the gravestones out and just concentrate all the detail around the church which is you know obviously the main focal point so now the drawing's done, I'm just wetting the paper all over. Now I'm going in with some cobalt blue for the sky and dabbing out with a tissue to create some clouds. Really easy, simple method. And as always, there'll be um, a real-time tutorial over on my Patreon channel. I think there's several hours of content, three videos or so, um, to accompany this. Um, like I say, all in real time. No voiceovers or anything like that. Um, all the talking is done, you know, in real time. All the full instructions are there and everything. Um, so if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below, and there'll be one on the end screens too. Um, so if you want to go and check out my Patreon channel, that'd be fantastic. Okay, so I'm using a stippling method now for the trees. Um, I don't often do this. I've had this brush actually for several years, quite a few years. Um, and I used it quite a lot when I first got it, but um, didn't use it much after that. But I've decided to get it out again today and um, just demonstrate that method, like I say, over on Patreon. So now I'm using a very light wash of yellow ochre, um, just to give an initial coat to the church. I'm going to be working a lot in glazes today. I often do. I like that method of you know gradually building up slowly you know very dilute washes of watercolour over the pencil work although I actually call this one a pencil and wash because you know we've got detail there and which we're trying to retain uh, you know with the glazes of watercolour um, it's, en <laughs> it's ended up being more like um, just a regular watercolour because a lot of the pencil work um, got covered over you know I applied quite a few uh, glazes there and went back in and created some detail with the watercolour to try and get back some of the detail that I've lost um, you know, of the pencil work with all the glazes. But anyway, you know, it's like I say, it's the first time I've done a pencil and wash. 
um, on this paper so I'm still finding out um, you know the qualities of it very light glaze again to start off the the colour on the church roof I'm kind of using two mixes there and letting them run in together probably not um, coming across very well on camera because the mixes are quite light and very subtle I can't remember if I mentioned at the start or not um, but I'm actually using Cotman watercolours for this so all the materials that I'm using today are all student quality and all very inexpensive um, and all very good as well actually it's, it's surprising um, I mean I know artist quality materials you know are always going to be better and they're always going to be more expensive too so it's nice to find you know student grade materials that actually produce really nice results um, you know with this paper and these paints I think you can you know get really nice results with that combination in fact I'll leave product links in the description below um, for you to go and check out if you want to so if you're a beginner and you're on a budget and you've been down to your local art shop and you've been scared away by the <laughs> the high prices of all the art materials um, you know I don't think you'll you'll be disappointed with the aquafine paper and the cotton watercolors I think you know for a beginner you probably can't get much better you know unless you're going um, you know artist quality straight away and paying for you know the top stuff straight away I mean that's entirely up to you I mean I would recommend it you know if you can afford the artist quality go for that um, but you know like most people like myself you know we're just kind of rubbing along and getting by and we can't always afford you know the, the best quality materials and everything so you know we look for alternatives so if you're somebody that's you know on a budget um, and you're looking for really good quality art materials just check the links in the description below and um, you know t take a look at these read the reviews and everything um, because I wouldn't recommend anything that wasn't any good um, you know, I think you'll be really pleased, you know, with the quality of this paper and these paints. Even the palette that I'm using at the side of me um, is just a very cheap plastic food display tray, um, but it doubles up as a watercolour palette, and it works perfectly. I think that cost me less than two pounds, so uh, it's watercolouring on a budget today. In fact, two of my friends here on YouTube, Dave Usher and Alan Owen. Um, they both use plastic palettes as well, um, you know, and they, they get great results with it. Although Alan, he does use one of the um, Holbein palettes as well, uh, but I mean, it's always nice to have several palettes, isn't it, you know, at your disposal. But these cheap white plastic palettes, you know, they can be put to really good use, um, you know, for watercolour mixing palettes. So while we're on the subject of budget watercolours and daily round the aquafine paper, um, I've been thinking about buying a set of the Daily Round the Aquafine watercolour paints. Now I remember using their student quality paints oh, quite a few years ago. They used to be called Georgian uh, watercolours back in the day. But obviously the name has changed now to Aquafine. Um, you know, and I'm that impressed with this Aquafine range at the minute that I thought, well I've got to try out the you know the watercolours because I've I've heard good reports about those as well. Um, so I mean I could do a whole video series couldn't I on you know budget art materials I mean if that's something you'd be interested in let me know in the comments section below um, you know if I get enough interest I'll, I'll gladly put a few videos together for you you know reviewing some budget friendly art materials and things like that so yeah but I am definitely going to be buying um, some of the Aquafine paints and, and giving those a test as well very soon so um, I shall make a video about that um, you know for your enjoyment so yeah it would be interesting to know you know if there is a lot of interest in that sort of thing um, I'm sure there would be I mean because we're not all made of money are we really so I'm sure a few people will be interested in you know what are the best buys when it comes to budget art materials anyway back to the painting I'm using the stipple brush again now just to create some grass texture I'm just dragging it over the paper just very lightly and just flicking it up just to create this sort of grass effect it looks a little bit harsh at the moment um, but I'm going to be putting a few glazes over that um, as soon as that's dry I did actually overwork this foreground I think if I'm honest I think 
I almost spoil the painting um, with this foreground. I went a little bit too heavy handed with this. Um, you know, I've got no excuse really, I'm not blaming the paper or the paints or anything, it was entirely my fault. Um, so yeah, if you are doing something like this at home, just go lightly with the glazes. I mean, this is a method I've used lots of times, um, you know, glazing over textures. And it's something I'm quite used to, but I haven't done any watercolour painting for several months actually, so, um, you know, it can take you a few paintings to get back into the swing of things a little bit. And as you know, if you watch this channel, you know, I mainly work in graphite. Um, you know, I've been concentrating on that uh, just recently, you know, making a lot of graphite videos for Patreon um, and YouTube as well. Um, so it's nice to get back to watercolours now and again. Um, you know, I really enjoy working in this medium. It's it's a refreshing break from graphite, you know, because some drawings that I do, they take you know, 30, 50 hours, um, things like that. Um, whereas a watercolour, you know, a couple of hours, I can pretty much finish a painting. And it's nice, you know, it's nice just to kind of do that. It's more of a relaxed approach for me, watercolour. Um, you know, although I like the detail and everything, I find watercolour very relaxing and really enjoy using it. So the picture's, you know, finished now. I'm just going to peel off the tape and see what we're left with. So there's the finished painting. Um, it's not one of my best, but I really enjoyed doing it. I hope you enjoyed it too. So don't forget, there'll be full lessons over on Patreon. Um, I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks very much for viewing, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.